Hey, what is up guys? Jack and Matt here with the Toast Rios, and today we're going to be doing the cheapest Office Depot gaming PC. Let's talk about that. But first, a word from today's sponsor. This video is brought to you by GVG Mall, an online marketplace to gain access to some really awesome discounted game keys and more specifically Windows 10 licenses. So if you guys use the link in the description down below, type in code TB20, you'll get 20% off your Windows 10 Pro activation key, and then you just take the key that they give you, you type into the Windows 10 activation, and that's it, you have Windows 10 activated. We use GVG Mall to buy the Windows 10 keys for a lot of computers, like all of these computers, we use GVG Mall, and it's a very helpful resource that you can use today by using the link in the description down below, and also using code TB20 at checkout to save 20%. So let's continue this video. So, this right here is a PC we bought from Office Depot. If you don't know what Office Depot is, check the link down below, you can check it out. It is basically like a Staples, uh, more like an office supply store that also happens to sell computers. And we went through the process of going in store and picking out another pre-built system, which if you've seen our recent pre-built system video from Best Buy, which is actually a full setup, this might look very familiar to you. And if you don't have an Office Depot in your area, you might have an Office Max, which happens to be the same thing. So yeah, this PC here is a Lenovo. It's a Slim Tower PC, and it comes in many forms and shapes, but the outside of it looks very much the same as all of the others. So- <laughs> Don't listen to it, I, I swear it's the power supply. Why is eco mode on again? I keep turning on. <laughs> So the last video we did had an i3-8100 in it. You can even get it with an A9 still if you're into that. But this one here has a Ryzen 3 in it. And now it's a second gen Ryzen. It's the 2200G, which is still a pretty good processor. So what we're gonna do in this video is we're going to test it with the integrated 2200G graphics, which have been shown to work pretty well. But then we're going to upgrade it with this is a 1050 Ti. Now, this is a graphics card that does not require external power, which is very important in a system like this because the power supplies are normally really low wattage and most definitely do not come with a six pin power for a graphics card. So we don't have to do any of the crazy adapting that we've done in the past. So it actually would be pretty easy for you to replicate it. So all you have to do is buy the system and go on eBay and buy a 1050 Ti and you're good to go. Now, this is kind of a continuation of our series of testing these pre-built systems that are designed for office work, but but can be used as a build a PC in one day solution where you go to like a store like Office Max, like we did Best Buy and Walmart, and build a PC that could play video games and also could double as an office PC. So if your parents are looking for a new home computer, maybe you convince them to go this route and actually allow it to play a little bit of video games. Dick Sporting Goods. Dick Sporting Goods. <laughs> <clears throat> One of the big advantages with doing this is you do have a warranty with this computer. So you have a warranty, you can buy an extended warranty. Matt used to go to Best Buy all the time and well, he just, he conned the system. You know, he would get a pair of Turtle Beaches, they'd break or something, or he'd want an upgrade, just take it back, get some in-store credit and upgrade this computer to one of those like HP Omens or something like that later on down the road. But long story short, this comes with Windows 10 pre-installed, so you don't have to do any of that crap. You just have to take some of the bloatware off, install this graphics card, maybe put an SSD, maybe some RAM in it if you really want to because there is some upgrades you can do to the system, believe it or not, just nothing major. So what we're gonna go ahead and do is load this thing up with some games and benchmark it and see exactly how it performs with the integrated graphics and then switch to that 1050 Ti and see if this upgrade is actually worth doing. All right, ladies and gentlemen, so right here we have the PC before we do the graphics card update. And as you can tell, it's like installing all these drivers and everything. Uh, we're gonna test a couple of games before we add the 1050 Ti, and then we're going to show you how to upgrade the system with the 1050 Ti, and then retest a couple of those games again to show you what kind of performance benefit you get from adding the graphics card. Spoiler alert, it's gonna be pretty significant. So let's start out with my favorite game, CSGO. You know, op god, that sort of thing. All right, guys, so as I mentioned, the first game we're gonna be testing is CSGO. We are running on pro settings, which if you go into the settings right here, which is basically like all of everything, with multi-core rendering turned on, uh, we're gonna play a random deathmatch game and see what kind of FPS we get. Um, CSGO is a relatively easy game to run. Um, as you can tell on low settings, we're getting over 100 FPS for an APU, actually pretty impressive. We do know that the rise in APUs are actually kind of decent. The 2200G is a great uh, APU for playing esports titles, so uh, you really can't go wrong with this as a starting point and then upgrading it with a graphics card. Uh, games like CSGO and uh, maybe like Rocket League or if you play World of Warcraft or if you play a lot of other games like that, it'll run perfectly fine. Now let's focus and get some kills. 
Oh, no, that was horrible. But one thing I do want to mention is uh, we're actually pretty impressed that this uh, pre-built system comes with dual channel memory. That's something that's very important for uh, Ryzen because, you know, without dual channel memory, Ryzen systems really suffer. Okay, there we go. Um, so it's really good that these systems actually do come with that, even though it kind of limits the upgrade path because there's only two RAM slots. Uh, but it's still pretty cool to see that they do come with dual channel memory at 2666, which, you know, Ryzen loves fast and dual channel memory. Oh, nope, and that ain't it. All right, this is the last one. All right, come to me, I will kill you. <laughs> what is this music? You would not believe your... All right, guys, so we have Fortnite launched up. We're gonna do some solo queue. We have it on pro settings, which means 1920 by 1080 full screen, 1920 by 1080 here, and epic settings, and everything else is off or low. Dude, I don't even remember like how the like physics of this game work. What is the in Fortnite? So the APU, it's uh, you know, it's struggling, but that's to be expected. That's why we're gonna upgrade it. But I mean, we are <laughs> we are using almost a gig of our RAM off of the APU right now, and we're also using the RAM pretty well. And now we're getting like 30 FPS dropping in. So if we can hold that, I think we could maybe get a kill, or maybe I can gig. Oh no, I thought Joel got away with it. Dude, wait, what I, oh my god, look what I hit him for. Well, I placed 88, that's better than 99th, right? Yeah, but uh, I would say performance is pretty solid. I mean, it's yeah. still, it definitely has some room for improvement. We'll, definitely, we'll test it longer once we're on the computer, well, once we're on the computer again with a graphics card, that's when it's gonna get spicy. All right, guys, so we're going to wrap up the benchmark segment with the APU by using a built-in benchmark on Rainbow Six Siege. Uh, we're gonna run this on medium settings. Keep in mind, when we do have the graphics card, we most likely can max this game out. Uh, so you'll see the actual difference between performance when we do upgrade it, but we're gonna go ahead and run this benchmark and see what kind of frame rate we can get in Rainbow Six Siege, which is a popular esports title, but it is more demanding than some of the other games we have tested. So right now coming in, we're getting around 43 to 40-ish FPS, which is honestly kind of low for this game. While it is a little more demanding, it is not that much more demanding. And it just goes to show you that there's a couple things that are probably holding this back, like VRAM or maybe just the GPU power as a whole. It just doesn't work very well for this setup. But um, I have a good feeling that Timothy Ti is gonna help out. And as we wrap it up outside, it looks like we're at about 50-ish FPS. This is, this is kind of the lighter part of the benchmark, so that's normally the peak performance you would get. And also our GPU is definitely running at 6,000 whatever percent right there, so don't worry about that. But here are the final numbers. The max is 55, the average is 44, and the minimum is 10. I wanna be willing to bet those numbers are going to more than double when we throw in that 1050 Ti. So how about we go ahead and show you how to upgrade this computer with a 1050 Ti. All right, guys. This is computer upgrading 101 with Jackson. So we're just gonna we're just gonna pop this open, and just like the Intel build, very similar concept here. We're gonna pre oh, actually, we should probably pop this off a little bit so we don't break it. It's important because I think last time I might have broken it. Maybe we should. Let's just. Pop it all we're just, we're just gonna yeah. We're just gonna take it off. So we're gonna swing the bracket open. We're gonna have to remove two of these because this actually, no, we have to only have to remove one. This card is just the MVP. Not only does it not need external power, but it also does not require two lanes to be taken up. Nope, nope, dope. All right, and we're in. We'll go ahead and pop this back on. We will close up the secret cage of torture. And this has some little, little feet on it that will grab back into the appropriate slots and then boom and then whoosh dude do we time this how quick was this this was like a minute dude fastest was... upgrade ever and there you go she's ready to go so let's uh get the drivers installed and uh, see how it goes All right guys, so we have the 1050 Ti installed, drivers ready to go. We're gonna load into Dust 2 again and run on the same pro settings. And then we'll probably crank up the settings a little bit to show you exactly how much more headroom there is with the 1050 Ti installed. And uh, spoiler alert, it's gonna perform a lot better. What'd you do if it was worse? All right guys, so as you can tell, oh God, we are on pro settings and we are getting over 100 FPS, which is about what we were getting before, but it is getting closer to 200 in most cases. So 
This is definitely a upgrade over the 90 to 100 we were getting before with just the APU. Um, and yeah, it's a 1080 Ti, four gigs of VRAM, no external power required. So um, I can run around looking like a pro gamer, you know, playing at 144 Hertz, you know, I feel like I'm at a competitive advantage compared to the rest of the people playing this game. Oh, and I just killed Bot Flynn. Um, but yeah, we're hitting 200 plus FPS. And if we even crank the settings even higher, I'd be willing to bet we'll hit over 200. But you know what? I'm not gonna do that because uh, CS in their settings. And when the hell did they add a Medi <laughs> shot? Please explain, somebody in the chat. Um, but yeah, over 200 FPS. Looks like we're almost hitting six gigs of RAM used, which is pretty good because we have eight gigs of RAM in the system. Um, but this is definitely a very capable gaming PC and goes to show you exactly what kind of performance we are gonna be getting when we switch to the other games. So yeah, CSGO. More than playable, uh, let me kill this guy. So what this is about now is this is about Fortnite, but we're using a 1050 Ti now. So 1050 Ti, 2200G, pro settings, let's see what happens. All right, so dropping in, we're already getting like double the FPS we were before. Now this game has been reported to have some stutters here and there with the new updates and whatnot. So, you know, if you see a little bit of stuttering here and there, you might not have to blame the computer. And this is really loud. It's well over 60 FPS, that's beautiful. 60 FPS. Sounds like the same situation as last time. What do you mean? You're like going to the same place. And die. Just don't die this time in here. I got a shotgun this time though. Yeah, I boy! Did it! We killed some people. Well over, we're at like 150 FPS inside a building. That's pretty it's respectable. Pretty good. Can't complain about that. Oh, <laughs> oh, oh. nice try, nice try. Oh, did, what, tell me the shot didn't go off. I don't even. It did go off. It. I don't think it hit him now. Yeah. Okay. Well, there well, you go. I gotta kill this time. <laughs> Way more performance. Yeah. All right, guys, for the sake of showing comparison numbers to see exactly how much more performance we're actually getting, we're gonna leave the settings on medium, but just keep in mind, this has a lot more room to scale up to well over probably very high, high settings. So let's see what kind of performance we do get by playing this on medium settings. And as you can tell, over 100 FPS at 1080p. Uh, this game runs pretty well on a majority of hardware. Um, especially with a game like this, you wanna aim at the like 60 plus FPS mark, maybe in some high refresh rate if you go even lower settings. Um, as you can tell, the GPU is pinged about 98%, so that means that the graphics card is being utilized to close to its near full potential. And that CPU is running at 3.625-ish, not fully boosted up to 3.7 like it should. Um, but it's doing all right. Keep in mind, this is closed up in a system that doesn't have the best airflow, but you know, pre-built system problems. But outside in the uh, lighter situation, we're at around 130 FPS, which again, before it was at around 50. So this is like a massive difference compared to uh, the APU graphics. And as we wrap it up real quick, we have a max FPS of 161, an average of 109, and a minimum of 43. So how about we go ahead and wrap this video up real quick? All right, guys, so you just saw some epic gaming performance. You got to see the before and after, the Ryzen 2200G with eight gigs of dual channel at a little bit of a slower speed. And honestly, out of the box, this thing can be a gaming computer. You know, we did play every game we wanted to on it. You do have to run lower settings though to be able to actually make this thing play games, but it was a whole other story once we added that 1050 Ti. The 1080 Ti really doubled the performance, literally doubled the performance. And at only like $100 used, this is kind of one of the best value cards you can get. Yeah, you could go with something new like a 1650 and get a little bit more performance, but the 1080 Ti with, especially the ones that don't require external power are a really good value to find on eBay right now. And forget this system. In general, if you're upgrading a pre-built system, those are good options to look at. So coming in at 349 for this tower plus the $100 graphics card, you're looking at 450 for a pretty capable system that is easy to get if you have an Office Depot or Office Max nearby um, and kind of gives uh, our seal of approval because it's not a bad option to go with if you're looking to get a system today in a store. 
So to compare this to a system that we actually did a while back, which was a Walmart setup essentially, where we were able to get a computer and a monitor for like a little over 300 bucks, kind of similar to this minus the monitor. This is actually a pretty good bang for the buck just because 450 bucks and you're able to actually play all the games that you want to play, you know, it's, it's pretty decent and there is somewhat of an upgrade path. And this does come with the usual drawbacks of pre-built systems, which if you want to see a video talking about that, hit the eye in the top right corner. But for what it is, it does a good job. And if you can get it at this price point, it's something that we can definitely recommend you consider if you're looking to get a system today and uh, play some games with it. So as always, we hope you guys enjoy this video. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And we will see you guys in the next one. Goodbye. Bye.